guys, welcome in. Are you trying to sell your crochet plushies? Do you already sell your crochet plushies? Do you want some tips on how to sell your crochet items? I'm Robin Robin with my small crochet business called Sweet Beans Crochet. I have attended quite a couple markets at this point, so I have some experience with selling crochet plushies. I mean, you need for a display, but I think you might want to upgrade your display and then some tips and tricks on how to survive uh, selling your plushies in person. Number one on this list is bare minimum essentials. So for bare minimum essentials, you're going to need your inventory, whether or not you crochet plushies or wearables or you don't crochet at all, you need inventory. Personally, I crochet plushies, I crochet small up to large plushies. I like bringing, I wanna bring 200 items. If you have smaller items, you can increase that number. This is gonna vary by the individual, so there's not a set number that you need to bring. You can bring as many or as little as you'd like. Personally, I just like to fill out my tables, or if I have multiple tables, I'd like those to be full of product. Personal preference, so personally, I like to try and aim for 200 items. We'll then need an inventory tracker. So this can be as simple as a pen and paper, or you can be a little more advanced and use Square, but to use Square, you will have to input your prices and your stock, like how many you have of each item. And that can be tedious to do all that online. So it's up to you. Personally, I use Square, but you don't need to do that if you're just beginning. Then you will need price tags or price signs there. This can vary also. <laughs> so the easiest thing to do would be having sections that are the same price and putting tags out in front of those sections or using little chalkboards in front of those sections. That is the simplest way to price your items. If you want to spend more time on your pricing or if you have things that just don't fit into the price categories, you can print out and then cut your price uh, onto paper, which is what I do. I have a template that I use. I have, I think around 30 prices and I hand cut them. I hand cut the edges and then I hole punch them and wrap them with yarn and attach them to each plushie. That can be a little bit tedious. Uh, I do enjoy doing it. I don't have enough items that are individually priced where it makes it not worth it for me. But I also learned recently a new way to cut cost of price tags and still have them look professionally printed out. You design a template and buy business cards. The template can have two price tags per one business card. You just cut all your business cards in half and hole punch them. You can then attach that to the plushie. That could be a way to cut down on the labor of price tags. You will then need a means of payment. So this can be cash, card, or QR code. I use cash and card. Cash, typically I bring $250. I found that that's a sweet spot with cash for me. Anything more than $250, I mean, if you have more inventory, would definitely be smart. So it really depends on how much inventory you're bringing. So you need to reflect on your own numbers here. But this is personally what I found works for me. So I bring 50 and ones, 105s and 110s. And then for my square a card reader i there is a free version that square offers that you can plug into your phone and it's completely free with square i upgraded and i purchased the 50 dollar square reader which is bluetooth to your phone i really enjoy using that square reader and there's really cute like square reader holders that they have for sale as well to make your station look more professional but that's up to you I like the $50 square reader that I have. And then you will need a display, which I would say bare minimum display would include a table, a tablecloth, and a chair. That is the basics. That is what you will need. You can get the second hand, at least the table for sure, and the chair second hand. Um, I personally purchased these out of pocket because I couldn't find any in my area for the right price that looked presentable. So I purchased these myself, but a table, a tablecloth, and a chair. The tablecloth can really be your branding tool, especially if you're not gonna be moving on to the more advanced display items that I'm gonna be talking about, because you will need a tablecloth. You can get this anywhere, but you can make it your brand colors. You can make it kawaii, cute. You can make it really simple and mature. It really depends on what vibe you want your booth to be, and that can be your branding tool if you're not gonna be if you're not sure if you want to do markets full-time, if you're not sure if you want to commit to all this, you can get this at a thrift store, you can get a tablecloth at a thrift store, and you can really choose how you want your brand displayed in just that one tablecloth, which I think is really cool. 
You will also, you should bring bags for your customers. These can be affordable if you go to like the dollar store or if you purchase them on Amazon, you can get a pack of like 50 bags for pretty affordable. I have um, some bags linked in my description box below that I really enjoy using and um, they are affordable. So I use clear bags to sell my plushies. But there's also the craft store, they sell paper bags or the dollar store, they sell gift bags. So if you know, you're on a budget, you can choose accordingly how you want to sell your items, but bags are necessary. Please bring bags for your customers. And water and snacks, you will probably be dehydrated and not even be thinking about it. So just pack yourself a bottle of water and maybe a couple snacks. I'd say those are essentials for having a booth at a market. Sometimes they will have food that you can purchase that there are vendors but you don't always have time to leave your booth if you're by yourself and maybe you don't want to spend the money on what food they have there so bring food, water and snacks definitely recommend water and snacks those are my bare essentials for market prepping market bringing market planning you need those things however if you want to take a step farther and maybe do markets long term or maybe you can purchase these things later after you determine like yeah i like doing markets these are some things I recommend to brand yourself as a company. Signage and banners. So you're gonna have to design this with your logo and your name and how you want this. Everyone's gonna have different stuff with your colors and the fonts and there's so many options. Personally, I use Canva to design all my stuff and then I used Vistaprint slash Canva then to print all of my marketing supplies. Um, it's pretty affordable, but it is an extra expense that if you're not sure if you wanna do this all the time, you don't need to do. But banners, it's like having a big, I have a two foot by eight foot banner behind me, vinyl, waterproof with the ringlet like holes in it. It is perfect. I added adhesive, so I added a strip of Velcro to the back and I added a strip of Velcro to the back of my tent and it is a permanent, easy pop on and pop off banner. I really enjoy using that. Also, I recently purchased a custom table runner from Amazon, which I didn't even know they made those, but they do. And it helps if your table is at the front of your booth, you can have that at the front of your booth or dangling anywhere. So people walking by can see that. And then people who actually step in can see the banner behind you. So that's how I make a personally professional setup uh, branded setup. So that's what I did for banners. And then you should get business cards uh, at this point. If you've already created your logo, this should be pretty simple, but business cards slash thank you cards for shopping small. You can even get a generic box of thank you cards from Amazon, but if you want to brand them yourself, like through Canva or Procreate or however you want to design these, or if you have a friend design them for you, thank you cards and business cards are a plus. People want to bring home your information they want to know how to find you after the market they want to know how to order from you maybe how to reach you if something goes wrong so definitely print out business cards if you can uh risers grids and baskets so this is the actual display upgrade that i recommend when i first started i just had a table full of mishmash i did have baskets to organize everything but i didn't have a full display uh, these are things i did to upgrade my display uh, risers most definitely invest in risers uh, so that people can see your products at different levels. It really does help sell your products and then people can see more without having to dig through. So risers, I really like having the grid walls that I have now. They are a little bit pricey, but I do really enjoy using them. And then grid baskets, which are also pricey, but I think it's worth it. And then the baskets. So these are, this could be wicker baskets. It could be wood baskets. It all depends on what your market vibe is, but I really enjoy using those to categorize plushies. Okay, now is the tent, which is not essential to me because if you are in an area that is not too hot, that they don't require a tent, it can be a really big cost, cost eater. It can really make your display price go up. Uh, if you don't already have a tent or if you can't thrift a tent around you, it's at least $100 for a decent tent. And if you get a really a cheap tent, I've heard a horror story where the rain came in and just ruined all the stuff underneath. So you might as well invest in the $100 one if you're going to be spending $60 anyway on a tent that might break. After you invest in that tent, which I'd say is not essential unless you're gonna be doing this multiple times. And if you're, you know, the weather in your area permits you to not have a tent, um, I don't think you need to do that financially. 
but if you're gonna be doing this all the time, a tent is a good idea, uh, obviously to help protect yourself and your stuff from the weather, but uh, you will also need tent weights along with that. It's typically a requirement at markets to have tent weights and some markets have a required weight, <laughs> which you will have to meet whether or not you have enough sand. Sometimes they will check that. So things to think about, it does make the price of your display go up, but it is required sometimes. I would say it's not an essential if you can avoid it with the weather and if you can avoid it in your area, because some areas are not hot like here in Florida, so. There's that tent uh, and that can also be branded because they have different colored tent canopies and you can really choose how you want your brand displayed with that tent canopy, which can be really neat to, you know, individualize yourself. You will then also want to purchase a wagon. This is for convenience. It also depends on how often you're doing markets. Personally, I've done enough of them where it's really, really helpful to have a wagon. Honestly, I got my first one secondhand. I purchased my second wagon brand new on Amazon. It's a huge, extra, extra large, heavy duty wagon that I can put my tables in, that it fits the tables and it fits the grid wall and it's really a heavy duty thing. Um, but I purchased that after, after the fact because I realized I needed more pulling ability when I'm by myself. So it's a personal decision that I made. It was an expensive decision. I do recommend that decision or getting them secondhand if you can. Uh, it really does help if you have to lug your stuff and you don't always have to lug your stuff. Sometimes it'll be a drive up market and you can drive up your car and unload. Sometimes you can't do that though. So it is a good investment to make if you're doing this long term. I also recommend this should be a bear. This should be an essential. This should be an essential, but I forgot to put it up there. A portable charger. Bring a portable charger. <laughs> you don't know until you really need it. And unfortunately, I had a market where I checked my square reader the night before, ended up staying on all night, and then I showed up at the market the next day and it was dead. So my first customer, I went to take payment and I couldn't. So I had to manually do their card on square online, which you can do, but it just takes longer. So Papa by the grace of God, pulled out his portable charger and he had the right cord that I needed, the USB-C, which is square. And I was able to charge it for the rest of my shift for the booth, but I highly recommend just having this on hand, having it charged up, charge up your square, because it won't always be fully charged, just in case. I would say make sure you have a portable charger. If they're pretty affordable and it really does save, save you. Sometimes your phone might be dying, you might need it. Invest in that, it's important. And the last thing I recommend bringing to a market is a whip, a work in progress. I highly recommend this. I found a lot of people really enjoy watching crochet. The little old ladies who learn to crochet by their grandmas, who think that crochet is dying, even though, as you know, it's still fully alive. We're all still here. And I feel like there's still a lot of crocheters, which is amazing. I keep meeting crocheters every single day. But um, the little old ladies love to see that it's not dying anymore. They love to see people doing the craft. And then the young people who come up to your booth who are 16 and or 15 or 14 or 13, just learning how to crochet and they really admire the craft and they wanna sell themselves. And um, they get really excited and really admire when it's done. And then people who don't even know what crochet is, they don't even know that you created all the stuff at your table can see you doing it. And then they realize that this is handmade. So I found personally, I have not had one person bothered by me crocheting. Everyone seems to really enjoy it. I can get stuff done too. Normally I keep it down to simple projects that I don't really have to think about because I don't want to mess anything up personally. And I make sure that I'm doing something that I can still interact with people so that doesn't end the conversation. You know, I'm not by myself. Sometimes I'll stand up, crochet, greet everybody. Everyone loves watching crochet. At least in Florida, that's what I noticed. So if you're in a different area and people are offended that you're doing your craft, I found it really does help. And honestly, sometimes people buy it just because they realize that I'm making it. Like I found a couple moms that didn't know what crochet was and just loved to see that I was actually doing it. And they were telling their kids like, look, she's actually doing it. And then they purchased like one of the small things that I had. They might not have even purchased had I not have been doing the craft in front of them. I mean, I don't know but I found it really helps. So I always bring a whip. Normally it's something small. Sometimes I don't know what I wanna make and I bring a couple skeins of different colors. That's what I do. Um, those are all the stuff, uh, things that I bring that I recommend bringing um, and the levels of when you should bring the items. Now we're gonna be moving on to part three of this video, which is my tips and tricks. So 
we're going to start at the very beginning for how to find successful events that will be safe. So this, I feel like the, the safest events um, and the most advertised events are probably going to be through your city. It might be difficult to get into your city farmer's market depending on where you are and how full they already are or if they're already really busy or not. Like my town is really busy so they don't have any availability at any of the neighboring towns near me for a farmer's market so I always have to travel which is fine. I don't mind traveling but finding a city hosted event is always a safe bet. I would say number two safe spot would be making sure that the host is an LLC. Hosts don't always know what they're doing and they're not always credited. Like they don't, they don't always have stuff to back up that they know what they're doing to advertise for these events. Sometimes it's just someone who decided to rent the space and then they're now hosting a market, but they've never done it before. So it's the first time they've ever done it and it's just their name. If you look at Facebook Marketplace for events, or if you go to events online on Google, you can normally find out who is hosting the event and if it has LLC behind it, I have found that they're pretty legit, they know what they're doing and it's typically well attended. That's what I found. Uh, if you've had different experiences, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but I found if there's LLC at the end of the coordinator's name, they're a branded host and they're typically pretty well advertised. That could be, you know, just my area, but I have a couple of those LLC vendors that I really did enjoy hosting with or vending with that I know I'll be going back to because I know they were well advertised. I know they know what they're doing. I know they're very clear and concise with their expectations and I will be going back to them. So once you find a host that you like, I'd say stick with them. That's another tip. I'd say stick with them. Um, you know what works. You know how you sold well. You don't need to keep testing the waters at this point you know where you're you know where you're suited for so continue selling there or keep trying to vend with them don't burn the bridge keep going back they clearly your craft is wanted there personal experience recently where i did not go to a host that i've been with before and i went with a new host and my new the new host was it was just a really bad experience so i was just trying something new and it really i feel like it stung me you know like the bee stung and i should have just gone with the vendors that i've been with before because I know I did well with them so just a little tidbit of advice you can succeed if you do something new I'm not trying to say that that's not what can happen it can still happen for you but if you know where you sell well I feel like you should keep selling there it clearly did well for you I would also say that the fee matters the fee doesn't always matter because sometimes your local farmers market is trying to help the farmers in your area and they try and make the booth fee lower like sometimes i found most of the farmers markets are 30 to 50 dollar booth fees which is fantastic that's a really low booth fee for the area that i'm in um and most of the time a craft event fair is anywhere between 60 and 100 dollars typically for booth fees um but if it's low and it's not a farmer's market and it's just a pop-up event that's like ten dollars i have been there and i was like wow this is a really good price i'm gonna purchase the event purchase the event and then you show up and there's like two other people there and then no one it's not advertised it's ten dollars for a reason these people don't know how to host and they've never done it before so just take a look at the booth fee I'm not saying paying more is going to pay you more because that doesn't always work either but it's just a way to find a potentially safer market for you because if the fee is su super low it's suspicious you know what I mean so just keep your eyes open watch out for yourself maybe message the people that can help too message the people ask them about their foot traffic that can be really beneficial for you potentially Oh, this also depends on your area, but I just wanted to note that that can mean it is a low turnout event or they've never done this event before. So I really just wanted to throw that out there. Um, take it as you will and take pick, pick up and take down whatever tips from this video that you want, but the fee matters sometimes. Uh, I would then say that mock-up setups, mock setups are great. Really, really great way to gauge if you have enough inventory, if your products fill up the booth, how your booth will look on market day. Um, if you have never set up before and you really just want to practice like with all your items, 
and making sure you have enough time to set up. So normally they will give you a window of multiple hours or starting at this time up until the market time of when you can set up your booth and making sure you do a mock setup can really gauge how long it takes you, whether you're by yourself or with a family member or a friend, how long it takes you to set up your booth. So I highly recommend mock setups. I've done it a couple times with my business. When I change my display up, I typically do a market mock-up. I uh, highly recommend and then taking a picture of that mock-up because you are going to want to look at it later. So take a picture of your mock-up and do the mock-up, okay? <laughs> and then you can see if you have enough price signs. I also just wanted to say that's so, like you don't realize until like you're there and then you need an extra $5 or $10 price sign and now you don't have one. Do a mock setup and take pictures and make sure you print out extra signage if you do do printables or make sure you have extra chalk signs in case you want to add or change your display in any way. It really is helpful. Uh, take pictures of your display. Take pictures of your display after you do it, after you're set up, after you're there. Don't let the selling clog your brain. Make sure you're taking a picture of how your display looks because if you want to apply to some jury markets or you want to go to some specialty holiday events or you want to go to your city farmer's market sometimes, you will need a picture of your display and how it looked and some of your products and they really want to see all that. So take a picture of your display. Highly recommend doing that. Okay, and then I wanted to talk about some of the event requirements. So sometimes they require insurance. I would say the juried events that I've looked at, um, I did purchase insurance personally. It, I think it was around $300 for the entire year. Sometimes you can purchase insurance just for the one event and it could be like 50 bucks for the event or 30 bucks for the weekend or something like that. The insurance is really just for juried events in my area. So I don't know if in other areas it's just a requirement altogether, but it is worth it to me to be covered and then I can attend any event that I want to. I don't have to worry about I'm not having insurance and then they can't accept me. So I can get accepted anywhere because I have insurance and that's just what works for me. The next part of requirements is LLC, which personally I have never attended an event that requires an LLC. I did see one farmer's market in the South area that did require LLC and business IDs, which I do not have, so I did not apply. So far with all my crochet stuff and even selling on Etsy, it looks like you don't need an LLC. I think you're like, we're allowed to call ourselves sole proprietors. My bunny got out. <laughs> Every video she has to make an entrance, so she made her entrance. Now I wanted to just talk about some fun tips, things I found that really help sell. Uh, so if you already done a couple markets or if you're planning your first market, uh, these are some things that I really recommend that I noticed after doing all these markets that I really wish I knew the first time I did them. On the fun list of things that I found, I'd say number one is bringing quirky and oddball items. You don't really know what's going to hit off and if you make something weird or something that is not normal, that you don't have a million of at your table, like... I found the moth, which was a goofy lunar moth. It was by itself in a in a throne. Really just made people laugh. Um, so the moth that I had really stood out against all the other plushies that I had. And then I had a quirky ostrich, which killed everyone who was able to see it. And then she sold so quickly. I would say bring oddball items funny things that you know you don't even think about but maybe you see a pattern for something funny like I've seen the Patrick Star with like the thong which is just ridiculous and funny and if that's your oddball item I'd say bring an oddball item something that's not like anything else that you carry I'd say bringing three to five items of each category and then displaying them in groups of three to five there is like a business strategy selling strategy with people's eyes and being drawn to three to fives in groups of three to fives so I would say at least crochet three of each um, item that you plan on bringing, whether that's different colors or um, I really found people like purchasing in multiples because people typically come to these craft fairs in groups or in like with their best friend or in little trios. So having multiples of each product also will help cater to those people because if you only have one of each, then one person can get a dinosaur and the other person can't get the same dinosaur and then they might not want to purchase that at all because now they can't get matching things. So bringing multiples of each item really does help. Not required, but really does help. Having an attitude of gratitude. Very simple, right? But in the moment we can get caught up and you're really excited, making sure like you look these people in the face 
you smile and you just say thank you so much. Like I, it really meant a lot. Thank you. Having that attitude of gratitude can help that person if they do swing back by your booth. Maybe they'll want to buy another thing from you. Or if they see you at another event or if they see you next week at the same event, they'll remember that you had that attitude of gratitude and that they want to support you because you are a kind, good person. I would say that goes a long way. <laughs> so attitude of gratitude. I'd also say what can help people come back to your booth is giving out freebies. I recently started doing this. I did not always do this. Um, I didn't have the stuff to do this before, but I recently purchased, I think it's like a pack of a thousand stickers, like just fun, goofy stickers on Amazon. And now I'm giving them out. Um, sometimes like if they're obviously purchasing multiple, giving them multiple stickers, but having that little extra thing in their bag really does mean more to them than you just handing them the plushie. So I'm giving everyone a sticker and your business card. The last tip on my page, the very last tip is making sure people go home with your brand. Meaning if you have business cards or thank you cards or even just a sticker with your brand name on it, make sure people go home with that. Even if they don't purchase anything, make sure they're going home with your business cards. They can find you later because chances are if they're not purchasing now, they might think of you later and then they don't have anything to show. Like what was that crochet person at that one event? Uh, making sure people go home with your brand name is really important. And I would also just throw in here um, while we're talking about this keeping people remembering your name. If you get custom orders at an event, do not, and I repeat, do not tell people to email you because then you're expecting the customer to go home and remember that, oh yeah, I wanted that custom order from that one person. Oh, let me go pull out her business card and look at, very, I mean, that can happen, but if someone asks you for a custom order at an event while you're at the event, you should take down their information so that you can reach out to them later so that you can be like an advertisement for yourself later and talk to them later and, and remind them that, hey, you wanted this. How can I make it happen for you? Make sure you're picking up their customer information. I failed to do this for a couple markets. I spoke with my dad and I realized I was doing this whole selling thing wrong without even knowing it uh, by me telling people to email me. It was forcing the customer to remember to do something that they might not be thinking about not even next week or the week after like they might just it might life goes on so making sure you're receiving their information to then not harass but remind them later of what they wanted and how you can get that to them as soon as possible i hope new and returning sellers are able to find a tip from this video and apply it to their future markets Everything I spoke about today that I actually use in my displays are linked in the description box below. If you enjoy crochet content, I produce a video a week, either market prepping or vlogging. Hit that subscribe button. I am always here to be your crochet bestie. I'm also on Instagram and TikTok. I'm not as frequent on TikTok. Have a wonderful week, you guys. Bye.